Hello and welcome to another Battle Games in Middle-Earth painting tutorial. Before we get cracking on this lovely model, I just want to thank all of my supporters on Patreon. I've just sent out some goodies to you all as a thank you for everything you do. If you want to join in and get some freebies, head to patreon.com slash battle games in Middle-Earth. The link's just above me now. So today we're tackling a fantastic Forged World display piece of Thorin and Azog's duel on the ice at the end of the Battle of the Five Armies. I've painted Azog already and there's already a video tutorial up, click a link in the description now. Uh, but if you want to watch Thorin, here we go. I'll be honest, this is one of the trickiest models I've ever painted. But I'm really pleased with how he came out in the end, so let's get cracking on this icy display piece. Starting with Lead Belcher, I painted the chainmail on the inside of Thorin's coat, which we'll wash later, and also the sword and the toe caps on those boots of his. Next, I start on the coat with Macrag Blue. To be honest, the coat is a very dark teal in the films, but I wanted to give it a little less drab colour, so I start with this and then we dull it down a little bit later. I think this colour kind of works better to represent Thorin's melancholy end. Just thinking about his funeral makes you feel blue. Mwah. Next is a wash of Nuln Oil, or Badab Black, pretty much everywhere. As you can see, I just go hell for leather over the, well, leather, but also over the metal too. And after that's all dried, let's move on to the next paint. How many paints in are we now? Oh yes, that's right, four in. I take a Drakenhoth Nightshade and give the leather a nice blue wash for the fourth paint. Uh, it's already been darkened a bit by the Nuln Oil, but the blue wash just adds a little bit of extra richness to the blue coat, I think. Next, we use a paint I haven't come across yet, but is like the old brazen brass uh, GW used to make. Um, it's called Rune Lord Brass, and I'm using this as a base coat for all the golden areas. Uh, essentially, I wanted to make the gold a little less shiny and a bit richer for Thorin. Um, as King Under the Mountain, it just felt right to add some age to the gold by making it just a little bit different to my usual gold style. I apply that to all of the trim on the blue jacket, um, and you can see the reference picture I used here to make sure I'm getting the right spots. Um, these picks are really useful, by the way, for these sorts of minis, and are literally plastered across the internet. All you need to do is just search Thorin Battle of the Five Armies, and this is one of the top results. Now, with a mixture of the Fang and Macrag Blue, I get to work on the laborious process of highlighting. It is a very detailed model, so I try to do it just as here, picking out as many of the folds as I can, and also eventually dotting all of the individual diamond segments on his quilted leather jacket. I do sort of dry brush it a bit with a fine detail brush, but I also pick out some individually later. There's no particular reason for why I did either method on any particular part of the model, other than comfort and ease, to be honest. If you really want to nail it, then obviously picking out each diamond is preferable, but there comes a time when we all care about a model's minute details, but it is not this day. An hour of fools when we forsake all bonds of fellowship in favour of extra time painting. Okay, okay I'll, stop, I'll stop that. Because I really am a glutton for punishment, I use Fenrisian Grey to go one step further than sanity requires and do an extreme highlight on the clothing here. I mean, it, it does improve it, but this is the bit I well and truly hated. Part of me really likes the less detailed models, because then I don't have to paint the high detail in. And I literally spent 10 minutes just on this one colour. Ugh. And to be honest, I'm not convinced this highlight's even that necessary either. Next, using Dryad Bark, I start painting his trousers. Looking back at it now, it actually looks a bit rubbish. I, maybe it's this is a mistake, but I know I'm happy with the end result, so bear with me and we'll see what happens later on in the video. Watching this step also makes it look a lot worse. Um, painting Mournfang Brown onto the boots feels like an odd choice, especially because I don't often paint shoes and just leave them black. But here, I do need to make sure they contrast with the icy base, so a warm brown really works. Eventually, it looks good anyway. 
I think. With Iron Breaker, I start to highlight all of the metal on the model. So I started with the little metal toe pieces on the boots and the sword before doing the very gentle dry brush on the chain mail. Even now, I'm not happy with the chainmail, really. I think if I dry brushed it from the very start, it would look a lot neater and showcase the detail better. So I'd recommend that uh, to you, although I've already told you to do it one way, so apologies. But onwards and upwards with Devlan Mud, or Agrax Earthshade. I washed the boots and trousers with it to just darken them up and make them look a lot less bright, because at the moment, the contrast is just too stark. And the winter is coming. Indeed, and that's the wrong fantasy epic. So Agrax your worries away, and we can start on the next layer, which is a return of that blue wash. After the highlights on the greyish blues, I felt it needed a bit more darkening again, and this just does the trick of muting it all down, while still keeping the details front and centre. This time though, with that half dark shade, I had to be more careful with the application. Using a detail brush, I made sure to only paint the individual panels on the jacket don't want any blue on that brass trimming. Although I suppose if there's any overflow, it should be covered up by the gold highlights later on. Now I finally make a start on his skin using Cadian Flesh Tone. I actually found this really easy. The details on his face are so defined that I managed to pick them out and still leave black in the recesses. It really helps define where his features start and end this black line. And by this point, I'm actually enjoying painting him a bit. So uh, just slow things down for a second. You can really see the detail coming together straight away after that layer. Not a lot to say on this bit. Just wash his skin with Reichland Flesh Shade and wait for it to dry. While that's happening, I realise I've missed some detailing around his shoulder pads. So go back to that with Rune Lord Brass again. Try and do these things in the right order or like me, you'll make a complete brass of yourself. Then I return to his boots with Mournfang Brown just to give them a bit of a highlight after the Agrax wash. The same with the trousers, but using Gorthor Brown on top of the Dryad Bark we used for them earlier on. Now I actually skip the layer of gold that I'd usually do, that's Retributor Armour, and go straight for the Liberator Gold, that's what I usually highlight with. And I'm not always a fan of Liberator Gold, but I mean, maybe it's just because it's not all that gold-coloured, to be honest, but I think with the brass base coat, this just works a bit nicer and gives a little less of a sort of pirate treasure kind of gold and more of a mysterious, sickly kind of gold, hinting maybe at that dragon sickness that something isn't quite right here with Thorin. And with that gold, I just edge highlight all the brass bits of the model. With Abaddon Black, I just neaten up Thorin's beard a bit after the layers of flesh earlier. Just slowing that down and really zooming in shows how careful I am and also how detailed this miniature is. There's so much expression in his face. I even do his eyebrows, which again aren't as hard as you'd expect because of the level of detail here. Apologies for the focus though, that's always tricky. Now we're getting to the real nitty gritty and with a layer of Stormhost Silver, or more appropriately for a dwarf, uh, the old GW paint Mithril Silver. I do a relatively quick final highlight there on the blade and the armour just to really brighten it up that one little bit. Give it a bit of shine. With Rhinox Hide I put a layer on the handle of Orchrist, which has been so sadly neglected here I should probably give it a slight blue glow because he's so close to Azog, but I, I didn't think of that here so I've just gone straight for it. Uh, still, a nice elven blade has a warm toned handle, so I use that and I also pick out the two tiny bits of belt showing through beside his buckle with Rhinox Hide. And straight back to that belt with Doomble Brown, I know it's a tiny amount showing, but don't buckle! under the pressure of such detail, and do the same with Orquist's handle too. I did mention earlier that I wasn't happy with the chainmail, so I tried to fix that here with the wash of Nuln Oil Gloss, which helps add some depth and some shine, but to be honest it's still not perfect in my eyes. With Cadian Flesh mixed in with Kislev Flesh, I highlight the cheekbones, forehead and the nose. He's got quite an angular face, has Richard Armitage, and to be honest, his likeness is captured so well here, it's not that hard to do. Almost the end now, a tricky step, highlighting black hair is never easy, but all I do here is mix a little bit of Storm Vermin fur into Abaddon black and pick out the top strands of hair.
Then with pure storm vermin fur, I just put that final layer in just to pick out the very top strands of hair and to give a bit more variation to his eyebrows. Finally, and I know my hand's in the way, so apologies for that, but here's how slowly I actually paint the eyes. I take time to make sure there's not too much white on the brush. Then I carefully dab one side of the eye in white. Then I do the other side, painfully trying to keep the camera's focus in the right place. Steady your hands and then jab that brush in when you think you have it right. Sometimes eyes look worse than googly eyes. Here though, I think they look about as good as I'm ever going to get them. And there you have it, Thorin done. I hope you liked this video and if you want to see Azog painted, uh, especially from the same kit, check out my other videos. And if you like what you see, feel free to support me on patreon.com slash battlegames in Middle Earth. And also listen to the Entmoot podcast. Another one should be on the way very soon. Thanks for watching.